UG. Thank you very much uh, for visiting me here in my office. And um, it, it's, it's a little difficult to ask you a question. Because um, if I ask you a question, you immediately uh, tell me that I know the answer already. So, uh, most questions that people ask, especially nowadays, especially here in the West, is what does it all mean? Who are we? Is this all there is? Is, um, is this what life is all about? What a mess! Uh, how can I become better? These questions you hear a lot. Not only uh, the questions which you are asking, but even ordinary questions uh, spring from the answers they already have. For example, a mathematician teaches mathematics to his students. He already knows the answer. From that, he creates a, a problem for you and then make you feel that you are trying to solve the problem, which already answered by him. Otherwise, you cannot ask any questions, see? And uh, all questions are born out of the answers we already have. And the question which you posed is no different from any other questions we ask. Uh, how is the weather? Even that, you see, is born out of the assumption that the weather should be like this, you see. Uh, so we assume that there is some purpose, some meaning uh, in our existence that is born out of the assumption that uh, there should be some meaning, some purpose uh, in our lives. And why should there be any meaning? Why? And uh, we are fed up with the way we are living, we are tired, bored with our day-to-day -day life. And uh, so naturally we ask the question, is that all? There must be something more interesting, more meaningful, more purposeful than what we are doing. And that's the reason why we ask this question. Nobody knows a thing about life. What is life? You know, it's the most difficult thing uh, to understand. And we are only interested in living and not life. Nobody knows anything about life. Even the scientists who are trying to understand what life is, uh, the origin of life on this planet, and the, the age of the universe, and why they are interested in, you see, how is that? Uh, the information that the universe is 40 billion years old is going to help us in our day-to-day -day existence. And surprisingly, you see, I find that more and more people in the West are getting interested in this kind of a thing. That's why they are importing all kinds of things from India, from Japan, from everywhere, because you have everything that you can reasonably ask for. You are living a very comfortable life. And naturally, the question arises, is that all? Hmm? So, that's all I say. And the idea that you should have some meaning, some purpose uh, in your life is the one that has created the demand. And we have created a market for that kind of a thing. And so when once you have a market, there is always somebody who is trying to sell all kinds of uh, ideas. You see, this is the meaning, this is the purpose. And also in our relationship with our fellow beings, with our partners in our life, uh, in a business management with the bosses, with the people who are working with you, you have an idea that this is the way it should function, that this is the way our relations should be. And so we naturally ask the question, the harmonious way of living. Why should there be a harmony? The idea that you should live in harmony with the people you are living with, with the people around you, with the, the world around you, is the one that has created the demand for a strange kind of creating a harmony. There is already harmony in this world. That makes it difficult for us to look at the problem and deal with it exactly the way it is. The idea that we should live in harmony is the one that destroys the harmony that is already there or make it difficult for us uh, to live in harmony because that's the, the model we have placed before ourselves. 
and the demand to fit ourselves into the model is the cause of our misery. So if we say we should love one another, <laughs> the one thing that is attracting my attention when I go around in this city is the poster of that movie, Love, Cheat and Steal. Love, Cheat and Steal. Steal. It's a very <laughs> attractive movie, I think. I haven't seen that movie and I don't see the movies these days. And they're all the same. <laughs> you see, cheating and stealing and uh, loving to cover up that. You see, it's a very fancy way of covering up our cheating and stealing. Uh, because uh, the law is uh, on the side of those who want to protect what they have already stolen. You see? And uh, we have grabbed everything that is there on this planet for ourselves. And we want to protect uh, what we have grabbed and what actually belongs to everybody see, on this planet. There is enough for everybody. So you have to protect yourself, what you have uh, stolen, if I may use that word. You may not like, and your views may not like, when I say that we are all thieves, we have stolen everything that belongs to everybody. So we have created a police system. If they cannot uh, protect us, we have an army. If the army cannot, we have created atom bombs uh, and there is no way you can continue that way at all. Uh, let me emphasize one thing. There is no way you can win the war against terrorists and the war against drugs. These are two powerful movements in this world. You can have all the destructive weapons in your arsenal, but there will come a time when you will not be able to defend yourself. I am not a pessimist. You can pat on your backs and tell yourself and everybody that God is in four heavens and all is right with the world. There was a time when I never thought that the British Empire would come to an end, even in the time of my grandson and great-grandson. Where is that British Empire? So, okay, everything will be all right. We can stay on the top of the world all the time. That's just a myth, you see. One day, everything is going to collapse. Yeah, I'm not a prophet. I'm not like the Jehovah Witnesses uh, talking of Armageddon or whatever you want to call it. But everything that is there in this world is changing, constantly changing. We talk of a change, but when the time comes for a change, we are not ready for the change. It's change is always for the better. I don't want to talk, you see. Uh, you have to, this is supposed to be an interview and you have to ask some questions. <laughs> and you know, the other day I watched a, a documentary on Channel 4 in England. Their documentaries are very good. On uh, red mercury. We read about that red mercury in the newspapers years and years ago. Everybody poo-pooed that. There is no such thing as red mercury. The only thing that we have is the mercury. And uh, it hinted, you see, the, the Russians uh, did tremendous research in that, and the Americans also got the whole stuff. And there will come a time when you will be able to carry a nuclear weapon, the size of a ballpoint pen. Oh, see, that, that's going to happen, you see. And so, uh, what are we going to do? And uh, your belief in God, your belief in uh, divinity, your <coughs> belief in uh, cosmic power. Why should God be on your side if there is a God? And now, we have, of course, uh, uh, quite a strong religion. We have a Judeo-Christian religion here in the West yes. with a big Bible telling us pretty much how life works yeah. or are supposed to work and that we have some questions that we cannot answer, but you should believe those in order to be saved and to end up in heaven. Yes, uh, so what, what is this all about? Uh, as you uh, pointed out, it's a belief, you see. You mm -hmm. cannot live without belief. The assumption that you and belief are two things, or the belief is separate from you, is the one thing that is responsible for uh, believing in something, and when that belief doesn't work, you replace that with another belief. See, you cannot be without belief at all. You have to replace one belief with another belief. When once you are disillusioned with the beliefs that you are already caught up in, you import this stuff from outside. You see, you may lose faith in God, and then you see, you, you 
import the things from there, the Brahman, this, that and the other. And Buddha. Uh, Buddhism from outside. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you learn a new language instead of speaking a simple Dutch or English. Uh, you begin to indulge in some Sanskrit phrases, feel important. That you see, that's all. They are all empty words and empty phrases. There is nothing. What has not helped those countries is not going to help you here. But we are not ready to face the situation that the things have gone too far and there is no way you can reverse it. So, as you said, the, I am not saying anything against uh, judo or whatever you want to call it. The judo-Christian belief. belief. <laughs> that uh, has made us believe that <clears throat> the human species is created for a nobler and grander purpose than all the species on this planet. And not only that, you see, we are made to believe that uh, everything there in the universe is for the benefit of uh, humankind. The crown of creation we are. That is why we have created all these problems in this world, the ecological problems. Everything you discover in nature you use them for destructive purposes. The progress that we are very proud of is really not a progress at all. We are progressively moving in the direction of destroying ourselves and destroying everything on this planet. Planet is not in danger. Uh, you know, you have uh, programs uh, in the United States and other countries. Uh, the planet is in danger. That is just a media hype. The next day, we are in danger. We are in danger. And is there anything that we can do to stop that? You may say that I am a pessimist, but uh, you are a cynic. Uh, you are this, that and the other. But I think we have gone too far. There is no way we can reverse the whole thing. And enjoy what is there and then go very gracefully. And some yeah. of these books like the uh, the history of the future and so many books I don't know I haven't met any of them they refer to, to me as a prophet of doom prophet of despair and quote me extensively even uh, in some book The Wonder of Childhood uh, every chapter carries a quotation from the man called Yuji I don't know I haven't even met them but uh, you know when you say that God is irrelevant uh, it's easy for the, the listener to say that he is an atheist, that he is an agnostic, or uh, they put so many labels on me, call me anti-guru, they call me nihilist, they call me this, that and the other, that's an easy way out for them. So when I say God is irrelevant, uh, you have to call me an atheist or an agnostic, but even an atheist uh, is involved with God. And uh, he wants to free people from the belief in God. And so he has created a, 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 an organization to free people from God. Whether you do it on an individual level or on a collective basis, it's the same. You see, You're still, still involved with the yeah. belief in God, whether God exists or not. Yeah. That is not really the question, you see. I have always quoted, I rarely quote anything because I'm not a, a learned man, I'm an illiterate <laughs> in many ways. Uh, See, if you want anybody to believe in God, show him that God can make you like. And if we are the examples of believers in God, we are in great trouble, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so if God needs your help and my help, it's something wrong. And so <laughs> we better leave God alone. And he does not need our help. And we have created the mess, or whether he created the mess, if you want to exonerate that God and give him some credit for creating <coughs> this marvelous uh, world, just give him the credit and leave him alone. Mm. In India, you know, you see, uh, you have only uh, 33 million gods. At that time, there were only 33 <laughs> million people. So they created 30 million, 3 million people in their own images, you see. You have only two arms, the God must have uh, 10 arms. You have only one head, he must have. You have only one wife, and uh, the super God must have uh, 8 wives and 16 concubines. 16,000, hmm. I think. I don't, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't They don't like what I say. And UG, they say, is always a useless guy. So, but they, for some reason, they don't brush me aside and say, he's talking nonsense. 
But when I say that uh, great heritage you are proud of has created this nation and people like you and me, there's something wrong with it. There's no reason for you to be proud of that great heritage of India. They say, no, 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 you are the one that is the product of that great heritage. With all, in spite of all my disclaimers, they say you are the typical <laughs> product of that great Heritage. So, so one of the basic messages of most uh, religious uh, religions is that, uh, like in Christianity, we are born bad, yes. full of sin, no, 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 and no. we have to be baptized in order to yeah. become more or less passable, yeah. isn't it? Otherwise, they cannot be in the holy business. Yes. It's a business. It's a business. Holy business, it's a lot easier to be in holy business than in this real business. If you don't deliver goods, you are out of business. So that's why we have the business yeah, of enlightenment. See, they can get away without delivering the goods. They promise you so many things. Happiness, peace, bliss, beatitude, <coughs> immensity, God knows what. And we fall for that kind of a thing. Yeah. And then they get away with that kind of a thing. They make money. You know. Otherwise, is it possible to buy a Rolls Royce car, 90 of them, uh, 360 Rolls Royce cars, try and buy one? Uh, no. And we fall for that kind of a thing, you see. And they are all con men. Con men. They con themselves and con everybody. And the question should arise in you, the basic question, why do I allow myself to be con? You know? And if there is an answer, you have to find that answer out for yourself and by yourself. So that was my question. Because I, I believe I'm not good enough, or I'm bad, or I should be enlightened, I'm in the dark, or... Uh, what will you do with enlightenment? I don't know. You set up a holy business. Yeah. Easy way to make money. So you can thrive on the gullibility and credulity of the people and make plenty of money. And many of them believe that uh, the world was a living to them. Why should the world be a living to them? What for? They claim that they are, you see, enlightened people. So Jesus Christ was foolish. No, 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 no. You see, this is a Christian land. <laughs> well, it's okay. No, no. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I was there on a program in uh, New Mexico, you know, that is a fundamentalist uh, thing. Yeah. And I quoted something about Jesus. I have a lot of nice things to say about all these great spiritual teachers of mankind. <laughs> you see. <laughs> and they don't like it, you see. No. But anyway, your program probably... No, but the Pope, the Pope thinks that uh, Holland is uh, lost for Christianity. We are heathens here now. Yeah, you are heathens. Yeah, we are missions. Yeah, we are missions in the territory. There is one country in this world yeah. that is taking care of everybody. I am never, never tired of mentioning this to the people. There is one country in this world who takes care of the basic needs of the people. It may be at the expense of this gentleman or her. And if the what are they there for? You mean Holland is taking care of? Sure, yeah. you see, they are all my friends. So you see, that's why I'm asking my Dutch friends to adopt me. Yeah. So yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> and how much share we will get out of the money you will get, they are already demanding that. That's a, mm. a Dutch mind, I suppose. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know. Uh, percentage they want. See. Percentage, yes, yes. We are the, the middleman to the world. You, know, yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. you see, I have uh, many friends, communist friends. I tell them, you see, there isn't going to be any classless society in this world. That's a dream. It's not going to work. See, because we are protecting ourselves all the time. You see, the instrument which we use for survival in this world is thought, after all, you see. It is born out of uh, the demand to protect itself, you see. You have created armor around ourselves and we will do everything possible to protect ourselves. And what you have, I want. What I have, I am not ready to part with. I don't know if your viewers will be interested in this kind of a thing, but anyway, you are a very popular uh, uh, what's your program. I don't even know what the program is. <laughs> and, uh, it's called Disneyland. It's called <laughs> program. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, but, I can uh, sit and talk in a very informal and casual way. I have been on television everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And this kind of informality is, is not possible there. You, you know, you say anything you like. Sometimes I say something nasty about Buddha in, in Japan and there. But Jesus, Jesus cannot walk, uh, swim so he walked. And the water was on the <laughs> ankle deep. And my interviewer thought that there would be 
the fundamentalists waiting outside to kill me. Say, yeah. Anyway, what, what do I have to lose? I have lived 76 years on this planet. I can go. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Nor am I interested in uh, uh, propagating uh, for or against anything. I, uh, you may very well ask me the question, and many people throw this question at me when I go on television like this, and, and I'm uh, finishing with my interviews. This is the, the 19th one, two more. Two more? <laughs> Finished, 21 enough. Mm. And then, uh, and so why 21, they ask us. Uh, I have some strange faith in uh, seven and multiples of seven. <laughs> <laughs> so two more. And, uh, that's your face. That's enough. I have done enough mischief. And yeah. My friends say that you have not done enough mischief and so we want uh, you to give more interviews. Mm. You know? So they even uh, are interested in making a documentary in India and even uh, somebody suggested uh, to Channel 4 or something submitted a proposal that they should make a documentary on UG. Well, how are they going to present me? They will have word of a, a problem to present me as what? I say I'm just an ordinary man. And uh, just an ordinary man, you see, that's all. And I am not an anti-guru, I am not a saint, I am not a, an enlightened man, I am not uh, any of the things you think that I am. But how are you going to present this man, very crude, rude, and uh, he doesn't uh, indulge in uh, saying anything very romantic and, uh, you know, promising something. How are you going to present it? It's very difficult for them to present me. And uh, the Indian television also interested, but when once they invest money in me, you can't say something nasty about India. No. No. <laughs> and so, and I said, no. But the most important thing is being ordinary is okay, but being just ordinary is very special. No, it's very difficult to be ordinary. You, see. you know, we are, we have been brainwashed to believe that you cannot be an ordinary man. You see, so we have created a model. And what is that model? The model of those uh, spiritual teachers. The level. And you want everybody to fit himself or herself the case may be into that model. That's the cause of our misery, that's the cause of our suffering. Why should you be like Ma, Buddha? Why should you be like those spiritual teachers? They existed thousands and thousands of years ago. And uh, what is there is something unique, something extraordinary. There is nobody like you anywhere on this planet. And that living organism, you see, is the result of millions and millions of years of the past. You see, you can, you cannot uh, compare anything with that. You see, unfortunately, uh, the belief that you should be something like that, that you should not be this, that you should not be that. You see, we are caught up in this. And people ask me you, these questions. You suggest people to do this and murder, get away. You, you watch uh, movies uh, full of uh, murder, mayhem, rape, and, but you don't do anything that you ask people to do. I am not recommending anything. I am not condemning anything, you see. And those who condemn really are not the kind of people that should condemn, you see. Mm. If, what, if that is operating in their lives, they, they, they wouldn't condemn anything. To me, there is no such thing as morality at all. So I can never be moral. So I am not uh, trying to be free from these opposites, good and bad, right and wrong, morality and immorality. I am just not caught up in that at all. So as soon as we think we should be good, then you are bad. Then you are really bad. Yes, really bad. The only bad thing comes out because you are going to be good tomorrow and 10 days after, next year, 10 years after and uh, the Indians have invented a thing called next life and always next life. You know, nobody can get enlightenment in the present life. According to the Hindu tradition, impossible. You have to go through 84 million lives. <laughs> and then you have to be born as a cow. <laughs> no chance. And then you as a Brahmin, the highest uh, caste there. Then you have a chance, maybe. Not in this life. And how come all these people there, the gurus in the marketplace, Selling uh, ideas, ideas that you can be enlightened. You see, yeah. So it's our ideas. According to that tradition, I don't believe in tradition at all. You see, but whatever 
that word means uh, that uh, such a man, if there is an enlightened man, he is not interested in enlightening anybody else because he does not know that he is an, an enlightened being. He will never pronounce to the wide world that he is an enlightened man, uh, that he is going to enlighten everybody. This is a marketplace, so there is a demand and supply. That's all there is to it. So you can live in hope, one day you are going to be an enlightened man and probably set up holy business like the, the gurus in the marketplace and make money. Yeah. Yes. Because everybody wants to be better and more and clear yes. and holy. And it is that that is creating the misery for the people. That's all that I am saying, you see. And you are wanting to fit into a, 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 a framework created by those people, modeled after those uh, teachers, whether they existed or not, uh, I don't know, no, I don't care, you see. I uh, have never been interested in that kind of a thing. I read once uh, the student, uh, uh, the lives of saints, Catholic saints, eight volumes, each one as big as the Encyclopedia Britannica. And uh, the writers have tried to fit them into that mold and say all of them uh, from their childhood live exactly the same way uh, the saint is supposed to be, you see, uh, you know. And uh, I give you a personal example, you see, a friend of mine who has been with me for almost 25 years and a great uh, uh, Arikada man, you see, he gives religious discourses uh, uh, with music, singing, songs. Both of them wanted to give a religious uh, musical discourse on uh, this man called Yogi. They spent three months trying to find out one event in my life which could be footed into that beautiful songs. <laughs> so they gave up. She gave up? <laughs> they gave up. <laughs> that man was very well known for his uh, musical discourses, religious discourses. He gave discourses on <coughs> Ramana Maharshi. Everybody dead and alive and yet to be born. But uh, every time he gave a discourse, uh, he used to draw 5,000, 6,000, uh, 8,000 people from every walk of life. <laughs> impossible. There is not one event in his life which could be fitted into his saintly life <laughs> and much. Let us, what is stability? How, how does it matter and where does it come from and how it really gives a feeling of... That is an assumption on our part given to us by the scientists that there is a stability here. Everything must be stable. Why? Why? Why, why should it be stable? It is, uh, uh, we don't know whether there is any stability, we don't know whether there is uh, any order in this universe or chaos. And somebody says there is chaos and he gets a Nobel Prize, another fellow says that there is uh, order, he gets a Nobel Prize. Now somebody comes along and says that uh, in the same frame there is chaos and there is order. So where do we go? From there. So when we are born, we learn a bunch of stories, and basically it's all lies. Uh, the, the mother first imposes all things on us, uh, first of all. And then that's why I call mothers monsters. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> you see. So we should call it monster day. I was, I was on yeah. TV Asia program there, and one woman was giving birth to a baby, and she watched my program. <laughs> What should I do with my baby? Abandon that baby, I say. <laughs> and uh, why mothers are monsters? Even my interviewer happened to be a, a woman. She said, I'm a mother, I have four children, you see. I said, all right, you, you mothers are monsters. And the children are no angels, you see. And what about fathers? They don't count at all, you see. She don't count. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are trying to be funny. But, you know, from the time they are born, you see, the, the first time a mother kisses the baby, that's the beginning of the end, <laughs> you see, you know. And uh, you see, we have not come up with uh, any idea how to raise children, you know. I had four children, you see, one died and three of them are still alive. And I allowed the children to cry until their throats became hoarse and after that they never cried, <laughs> you see. He said, what are you doing? He said, why do you allow them to try? Forget it, you see. And, uh, and so, uh, they are more intelligent than us. We are not ready to accept the fact that the children are more intelligent than us. We cannot handle them. 
So we impose our fancy ideas and beliefs on them and force them to fit into the framework which we have created. And uh, they also uh, want to be accepted by us. You see, otherwise, how can they survive in this world? Yes. There's no way they can survive in this jungle. In the jungle, you see, you can survive, you know. Uh, but here, we have created a kind of world where you have to be forced to learn things to function in this world. Even if I want to eat some fruits, uh, the trees either belong to an individual or to the state. You see, For example, we have uh, uh, in my place there, in the, up in the hills in India, uh, sandwood trees. The sandwood trees, uh, whether they are in your private property or out there, they belong to the government. And so all the trees come in the night and cut them. And so my landlord suggested, why should they take it away, you see, and then we use sandalwood for our fireplace. <laughs> what is emotion in a normal human being's life? You see, emotion is not different from thought. You see, when you are happy, or you, are, you have to tell yourself that you are happy. So, when once you translate any sensation within the framework of the knowledge you have, you have created a problem for yourself. So you push yourself to see that, you see, it acts, you see, you know. But uh, it doesn't operate that way. So all emotions are thoughts. All feelings are thoughts. We are not ready to accept the fact that all feelings are thoughts. You see, you give importance. You know, you must feel good. You see, how do you feel good? I force myself to be kind to somebody. Huh? So that's the reason why I tell people, don't practice kindness, you will have uh, heart attacks. You see, the heart is there only to pump blood. If you force that heart to feel kind, you see, you know, there is a problem for the heart. Hmm? So the living organism is not interested in anything you like, anything you want. So it doesn't want to learn anything from us, it doesn't want to know anything from us. We don't understand this basic thing. We think we know a lot and we force that body to do things that it is not interested in at all. Huh? It's not interested in emotions. It is not interested in kindness. So I always give the example, you see, of uh, this cells, the cellular structure is a tremendous uh, thing there. And the, the, the memory, where is it located? It is not located in any particular area, not in the brain. And all this talk of neurons and all that is absolute rubbish. One of these days they will have to find out, and they are going to find out, that every cell has a memory of its own. There is a cooperation there, you see. Not because you have to cooperate with your fellow beings, that you have to love your neighbor as thyself, or that you have to practice brotherhood. But the survival of this cell depends upon the survival of the cell that is next to it. That is the way the jungle life is operating. But we have an idea that you should cooperate, that you should love thy neighbor as thyself. What the hell you are talking about? In the name of love, we have killed more people than all these recent wars put together. Huh? So, uh, there, there we are. Your sexual feeling is also a thought. Yes, otherwise there is no sex. <laughs> but with animals then, that they... <clears throat> Anything you say about the animals, uh, you see, is uh, a speculation uh, on your part and is a projection on your part. And uh, why do you give the example of animals? What for? The elephants have sex once in seven years. Why the hell do you have to sex every hour on the hour? Sex, uh, I am not against sex. Sex has nothing to do with these spiritual matters. By controlling sex, by demanding uh, that you should have sex uh, on a particular day, and uh, somebody said yesterday, there is a school here, uh, school of Shankara, you can have uh, sex once a month, it seems. But according to the Hindu tradition, when once a child is born, that's the end of his sex life because the wife becomes the mother. <laughs> you see, only once in your life. So, if Apart from all these fancy ideas, uh, when once thought is used as an instrument of pleasure and use that for sexual pleasure, we have created all the problems. So sex has nothing to do with your spiritual achievements or, uh, at all, you see. You can invent a thing called uh, uh, 
uh, tantric sex and whether you have a sex with a prostitute or with your own mother or with your sister. I am not advocating that. I am putting it in a very crude language. Then it ceases to be of a problem. You see, man has also uh, a rhythm like the woman. You see, if you allow that to function that way, it becomes a simple thing. You see, you know, there are only two things that this living organism is involved in, concerned about, uh, interested in, that is uh, reproduction and survival. It's not interested in... Reproduction and what? Survival, survival. And, and reproduction. Mm -hmm. That's all. Nothing else. No. And all the ideas that we have, that uh, spiritual things, God, heaven, uh, just forget it. I don't know if it makes any sense. But, uh, yeah, so the, 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 it's basically the ideas that cause we, the problems. You we say. put ideas in our stomach. Yeah. And we wear ideas. <laughs> yeah. You walk through any of those. That fellow is telling you how you should dress yourself. And the body needs uh, very little food, very little food, you see, the, it needs some energy and it can uh, create glucose from anything. See, all the, the talk about proteins, the talk about vitamins is absolute gibberish. I don't believe in all that kind of thing mm. at all. They can say what they like. You see, that's why I say very often, if you believe uh, in... Uh, uh, the belief that uh, Jesus was born to a virgin, you will believe in anything in this world. Yeah. Any commercial that is there on the planet. Yeah. What they are selling there in the United yeah. States, you have no idea at all. And yeah. how can people fall for that? Uh, aerobics, and then you see now the yoga. Yoga is bad for this body because it's not interested in walking at all. Now in Germany, you have Tai Chi on television. Yeah, you have to get, instead of import uh, something new. You see, all yeah. the time you are fed up with your uh, uh, walking, jogging, and the, the high priest of jogging dropped dead in the tracks. <laughs> 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 and you know that uh, macrobiotic uh, diet fellow. What is his name? Ishawa or some some fellow? Osawa. 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 Mm -hmm. And uh, he made people believe that if they uh, ate microbiotic food, always they would live forever. While he was giving this discourse at the dining table, he <coughs> died dead. I am not joking. Mm -hmm. So you believe anything. So where do you go from there? Many do people you... are now concerned of living forever. Eh? They want to live longer and longer. That's eh? a battle, that's a war you will never win. Yeah. No. Because the nature is interested only in these bodies and not what you say, what you believe, what you think, because it is interested in recycling these bodies <laughs> to maintain the energy level in this universe. Nothing else. But the people who are looking for purity, what are they trying to achieve? This is so pure. The idea of impurity is the one that is creating impurity in your mind. If I may use that word, it's a dirty word. But mind is a crook. Uh, is a crook. Yeah, mind is a crook. Yes, it is. That's why we are. I'm not uh, including you. <laughs> the common decency and elementary manners. <laughs> the present company. <laughs> My mind is a crook. <laughs> All of us, wherever there is a mind, it's only interested in that kind of a thing, perpetuating itself until the end when it knows that it cannot. And that's the end of it. It's a but when we are born, we don't think. We learn to think. It's something new. Where the I don't know what thinking uh, exactly is. You know that no. there there are no thoughts there. There is no thinker. There is no thinking. Everything is put in like the computer. You see, it's a computer here, and so you use certain thoughts to achieve a goal. It doesn't matter what the nature of the goal, whether it's a spiritual goal or a materialistic goal, it just really doesn't matter. It's better to be a billionaire than to be, you see, a very, very rich man. I'm not against uh, acquiring riches, but uh, whether it's a materialistic goal or a spiritual goal, it cannot be achieved except through the use of thought, which is matter. So even the spiritual goal is a materialistic goal. You go to the temple and pray, what for? Why should that God, all merciful God, reward those who pray and punish those who do not pray? Why? Huh? 
Why do we believe in that kind of a thing? So there, there it is. That's all. But isn't praying like a kind of programming for yourself then? No, it's a comforter. Hoping that you see through the grace of somebody that you will achieve your goals. You feel better then? I just say, do you see? You feel good. You, you feel good because of the nicotine there. You drink. <laughs> I'm not against that. No, 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 enjoy no, 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 no. Enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> good, but you say thought is matter. Meditation is. It is a materialistic but, but thing. It gives materiality yeah. to the things. It's a matter. You see, so even if the goal is a spiritual goal, the matter turns that into a materialistic thing. So why, why do I go and pray? What do I want? The material things I want. That is why I pray. But what is thought then? Thought doesn't exist. You see, what is supposing you want to know about thought. You want to look at thought. See, you, what you look at is not thought, but about thought. What we are told about thought is all that you see. Otherwise, there is no thought. Thought also is memory. So I brush aside everything, consciousness uh, totally, because consciousness also is memory. I become conscious of the fact that you are wearing uh, blue jeans and uh, red t-shirt, you see. Otherwise, the physical eye does not see anything there does not see the colors. You would be surprised if you are sitting, there is a tree in front of you, the eye sees only the flatness and not the round thing. So if you see a round tree, it is what we are taught. It's born out of your imagination to look at the tree and say to yourself and to others that that is round. It's because we have been told and that knowledge you have about that you use and you create a round tree, every time you look at it, you tell yourself and others the tree is round. But if you are sitting here with no uh, knowledge of what you are looking at, that's not possible for you because it's all the time it has to translate every sensation to maintain its uh, memory, continuity of memory. Yeah. So it's just a simple memory table. It's a sound. You see, so thought is a sound, memory is a sound. Knowledge is sound, consciousness is sound, red do you say? So when you use that, what happens here is that this in this sort of an echo chamber here, it repeats itself. That gives you the illusion that there are two things, but actually it is one. You are out there and say hello and after a few seconds you hear that. In exactly the same way when this sound is born there, it repeats itself. And that gives you the illusion that there are two things there, but actually it is one. Um, um, many people then uh, realize nowadays that there's something uh, wrong with thinking. So they try to stop thinking by meditation or try to stop their thoughts or try to be empty or try to be here now, you know, in this, in this moment. You see, all that is bullshit. I'm sorry to... All that is bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry to use that strong expression. But, uh, you see, the present. This is the present. You see, if you recognize this as table, uh, if I recognize that as a smoke, it's the past that is telling me. So there is no such thing as the present, there is no such thing as now, there is no such thing as this moment. So, you are trying to free yourself from thought and put yourself in a thoughtless state. I don't know why. If you are in a thoughtless state for the millionth of a second, you will drop dead. I assure you, I guarantee that. So, it is not in your interest to put yourself into a thoughtless state. But one thing that they don't understand is how through thought you can put yourself into a thoughtless state. You are using thought. People talk of uh, effortless state. But you are all the time trying to be in an effortless state through effort. You are not going to succeed at all. You may not accept what I am saying. You believe what they have been dishing out for centuries. Why the hell do you want to be in a thoughtless state? That would be the end of you as you know yourself 
as you experience yourself. So it is not in your interest to be really in a thoughtless state. What for? They describe that state. I say the void. The, 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 what for? You say, how do you know that you are in a void state? Some people come and tell me, I was in a thoughtless state and they describe that state. How that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the thought was very much there. Yeah. You yeah. know. Otherwise, it cannot tell uh, that it's in a thoughtless state. That state is bliss. That state is love. That state is compassion. So that means something is there. The division is already there. The void. Uh, there a tremendous structure of thought. Nowadays, it's very popular uh, that people don't talk for themselves, but they receive voices, they yeah. channel voices. Yeah, you can hear your own voices. That means that you are heading that way. And you, you must be there. <laughs> but as a permanent resident in the loony bin. <laughs> <laughs> they are giving visas there. Yeah. yeah. The holy men. Go there. That's what I tell those people who come and tell me that I have meditated. Look here, you have not meditated. If you have really meditated, you would be there in the mental hospital. <laughs> True. They have not done any meditation. They just talk, you see. It's just like creating a peace on this earth through war. How the hell you are going to create peace? As I said at the beginning, 34 wars are going on here. And we were made to believe that the last war was waged a war to end wars, as it ended wars. So there is a conflict there, you see, the things are moving that way, you bring it back. And the peace that they claim they, they have as a result of this meditation is this. Between two wars you have some peace. So then it starts all over again. So there it is. So they have not really done any meditation, they have not really done any yoga, because yoga, this, by torturing this body, you are reversing the natural flow of the energy here. It's not interested in that at all. It's living a very peaceful life. And you have an idea of a peace, and force this whole thing to be in that peaceful state. So it is disturbing the chemistry of the body. So doing good to somebody else makes you feel good. That is what they call the do-gooders high. And you can start a scout uh, movement and then become a scout and do good unto others. I am not saying whether you should or should not. I am just focusing, spotlighting what the situation is. Isn't that enough? So it means that, uh, that uh, we literally uh, have to accept whatever happens. Uh, it doesn't mean a thing. Doesn't mean a thing. Yeah, I accept. So what? And mm -hmm. I still continue to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I accept it. I know that I am a damn fool, but I still continue to be a fool. Yeah. So that should put an end to my foolery, Tom foolery. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't. You know. So that is the problem there. Yeah, but if you if you accept it in order to get rid of your Tom foolery, then you don't accept it. Then you replace it with another kind of yes. foolery. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it's all right. If there is no word, we can call in our own words and mm. get away with that. <laughs> so you like, like, like parrots when you're repeating the words that our parents taught us. To put it very crudely, sir, these are two dogs. Two dogs. I am a dog. And the, whether you accept it or not <laughs> is irrelevant and immaterial. So that's, a sec that's a second name of God. It's a reverse spelling. Yeah. And so we are taught uh, how to bark uh, <laughs> make sense out of this barking yeah so all languages are the same exactly the same you see so you know how to space the uh, create the space between two notes and then then it's dutch and then german the italian otherwise if you don't know there is no way you can make any sense out of this no but this is a very artificially created uh, structure yeah. Where, whereas in the case of dogs uh, and then the parrots, uh, it's something uh, living there. Yeah. You see, the, what they are expressing, we don't know. One of these days, probably, we will understand. I was uh, just uh, hearing the story that in Italy, mm. there were two farmers who left their kids alone with a dog, and the dog was teaching the kid how to bark, and yes. it started barking. Yes. 
they learn how to bark. Yeah, the kids Just must the bark. Just the they pick up Dutch and then uh, yeah. start up to us in Dutch or English or uh, Indian language, uh, as the case may be. Yeah. So singing also the same. Finished. Everything is finished. First. So what about uh, children who are like raised by wolves or so and become like wolf children? Uh, they are better than the children raised by us. Yeah. Yes. They have no problems. They don't have to go to a psychiatrist for analysis. They don't no. have to go to a church and pray. Uh, you see, there it is. Mm. So that's it. I don't know if you can make anything out of this. You can. No, it, uh, it stops every conversation in its tracks. You see, one problem... It's great for a talk show. <laughs> not for a talk show. You see, because I don't sum up anything. These are all disconnected, disjointed series of statements. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. So it's very difficult to sum up and present to the viewers or the listeners, as the case may be. Uh, as something... Uh, uh, that they can understand and uh, make out something out of this uh, and use it. You see, well, why do you listen to anything? You listen to the teachers only to learn something and use that to bring about a change. In you. Yeah. So I am saying all the time there is nothing there to be changed. Thank you. There is nothing there to be changed. Yeah. So it runs counter to everything that has been said by everybody before. But I take it or leave it. Mm. That's it.